had a conversation with my daughter the one day where um, we were talking about something and I was trying to give her advice. And she's like, uh, but, but how do I do what you're telling me to do? And I'm like, you just do it. And she's like, yes, but how, how do I do it? And I'm like, I was so confused. I'm like, well, what do you mean? How do you do it? You just do it. So for her, she's looking for like, she, the example she gave me is like, um, let's say there's a rock and, you know, I, I need the rock to be moved and you tell me you just move it. She's like, but I need to know what technique to use to move the rock. She's like, just telling me to move it isn't enough. Like, do I get some ropes and move it? Do I get a crowbar and that's how I shift it? Like, what technique do I use to move the rock? And I thought that was kind of interesting because in my mind, I already will have an idea of what I'm going to do. So I'm, you know, I I guess I jump from A to C, but I forget you know, that someone actually might need to know what B is. So this made me think about um, sticking to the diet. You know, it's people are like, how in the world do you stick to the diet? And I'm like, just by sticking to it, that's, that's how I do it. So there I jumped from A to C without giving any kind of technique. But when I think about it, there are techniques that I have used to help me stick to the diet. So coming from a Christian perspective, there is the number one technique is praying. (laughs) So that's um, God created this body. He knows what I need. And if I want to have, you know, an easy road, I'm going to pray and ask him to guide me to help me eat the things I need to eat. So that's one technique. Second one is Um, when I first started this, I didn't have any set number in mind. In other words, I didn't have a goal weight I was trying to get to. I didn't have, I'll try this for 30 days. Those were not part of the plan. It was, I'm just going to go. I'm going to start tomorrow. I remember this was on a Tuesday night. I'm like, I'm going to start tomorrow. And it was actually a Wednesday first thing in the morning, I'm going to have a keto breakfast. And that was the only plan that I had. That was, I was just going to try it. I didn't have any thoughts beyond that. It was just first meal, get the first meal nailed down, and then we'll think about the next one. And then I had the lunch and then I had dinner that day, which was interesting to me. I, (laughs) uh, yeah, it's not an accident. Um, I chose to start the diet on a day that was my niece's birthday. So we were going to be going over to her grandmother's house and there would be cake and I was sure that there was going to be other things. And I'm like, well, (laughs) this will be fun. But it was interesting because like the entire night, I'm like, well, let me just avoid the food for now. That idea of for now really helped. So it's like, it's not like I'm depriving myself forever. It's just right now, I'm not going to have those things. And I made it through the whole night. I made it through the whole first day. And then I just kept going the next day. Next day, it's like, just let me keep making the right food choices and keep going from there. So that's that's another technique is don't focus for now on the long term. Just focus on the next meal. If you go off track, don't have this idea of, oh, well, I'm going to have to fast to um, get myself right again. No, no, no just eat your next meal, what it should be. That's it. And this is also why I say, like, I know that there's a lot of people out there who have a goal weight. Well, I'm going to, I want to get to this goal weight. When you get to that goal weight, you're probably going to look down at your body and say, I can stand to lose another 10 pounds. Um, So to me, it kind of messes with your mind a bit because it's like, you see yourself as being restricted until you get to the goal weight. And then suddenly you're free from prison. And now maybe you can start having some of the things that you've deprived yourself of all this time. But that's another technique. The, um, so get rid of a goal, get rid of the goal weight. Just plan on one meal at a time today, tomorrow, the next day. That's it. This is how I live now. 
So even if I got to a weight that I have in mind is a good weight for me, that's great. But don't have it as that's my, that's the finish line. The finish line is when you die. This should be for the rest of your life. So another one of the techniques is that deprived mindset that has got to go. If you are going to have any kind of success eating this way, you have to get it out of your head that you are being restricted and deprived. So I've had that a few times. I've battled that a a few times during this journey. And I got to tell you, the first time it came up was three weeks in. I had been on the diet for three weeks and I was watching my daughter get a bowl of ice cream. And I just was like, oh, would be nice if I could have a bowl of ice cream. And I'm like, wait a minute. No one's making me do this. I am the one who chose to change my diet. So I'm not being deprived because I can't have the ice cream. I choose not to have it because of what it will do to me. And that's the better attitude. Now, you might not have any health issues when you eat sugar or wheat. Um, My oldest daughter's like this. She will avoid those things because it's not part of, you know, what she knows she should eat. But she doesn't have any health issues from it. She could eat those things and not have any problems except for weight gain, right? So um, anyway, she's, you know, she has that issue too sometimes though where it's like feeling like she's been deprived for a while and she just wants to kind of go off track. But that is an absolute trap. You have to get rid of the deprived and restricted mindset. And honestly, if you're doing keto or low carb, you can have a wide range of food. Oh my goodness, the sheer variety that you can have doing low carb or keto is just astounding. So there is no deprivation there. There is no real restriction. It's like, yes, you cut out carbs, but then you look at all the food that you can eat and it's just mind boggling all the good food there. And then even if you're doing carnivore, it's like, um, oh, well, I'm being restricted. I can't have vegetables. Don't have that mindset. If you want the vegetables, have them. Anyway, one of the things that really helped, especially in the very beginning, was having things go into the freezer that I, it's like, oh, I really wanted to have this dessert, but I can't because I'm doing this diet. I'm doing this way of eating. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe later down the road, I can give it a try. So I would package things up and put them in the freezer. And then like, so I, I didn't feel like I was depriving myself because I put it away for later. And then I would forget about it. And then three months later, I'd find it in the freezer. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So if none of my family's eating it, uh, this is going in the garbage. I don't feel bad about throwing away those foods because to me, those are bad for everybody. So it's like, I, I'm basically throwing away garbage. It's not, that's not a problem. I would hate to throw away meat. That, that would make me very sad. But anyway, that was one of the things that helped me get over that idea. And I'm at the point now where I don't want sugar at all because anytime I see it, I automatically remember what it did to me over the summertime, um, the cold sore that I got in my nose, the way I felt like I had a bad sinus cold for like three days. I'm like, now, will that happen with any treat, with any sugar treat that I have? I have no idea, but I don't want to take any chances. That was terrible. I don't want to go through that again. Um, so, I mean, that that helps to remember that. And that would be good for you to remember too. It's like, I see people in the groups who will say, oh man, I had a cheat for a couple days. You know, I had like several things I shouldn't have had and now I'm paying for it. And it's like, they'll be kicking themselves. And I'm like, okay, but you can only kick yourself for so long, but then say to yourself, well, that was a good experience. And that I need to remember that moving forward. That's another technique. Remember how it made you feel. Write it down if you have to. So, I wish I had written it down because um, my aunt had made this um, fruitcake last holiday season and I, she wanted to give me some because I, I am one of the weirdos who actually likes fruitcake, especially fruitcake that's made really well. So 
you know, she had told me she made it. She said it turned out really good. I'm like, I would love to try it. So she gave me some and I put it in the freezer because I'm like, some future unknown date, that's when I'm going to have it. So it was about three months later. I'm not even sure if it was three months. I can't remember. Anyway, when I did end up having it, it was that reaction again where it was within a couple hours, I could feel a cold sore forming in my mouth, in my nose, and the sinus issue started up. And I felt like that for like three days. Now, I didn't write that down. I should have. I should have written it down somewhere, but I didn't. And then when my birthday came along several months later, I had the sugar and I had the same exact problem. So, oh my goodness, you know, write it down. When you have a cheat, write it down and put it up somewhere so that you can see it and it will stay fresh in your memory so that you don't forget. Anyway, I think I've rambled long enough. Thank you so much for listening. Let me know if there's any techniques that you have tried that worked for you. Um, I mean, this is, we need to help each other. There's times I still struggle. So I would love to hear what other people do too. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.